Capcom. Press the A button. Okay. Hey, people of the interweb. I'm Nostalgic Dave, and welcome to the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. Alright, let's play a new game. So, fun fact about me for this game. I, oh, Lord. Just trying to balance this out. Okay, fine. I'll sit like this then. <laughs> so, I've played the... This one and the Ace Attorney, I've played the second game. I've never played Trials and Tribulation. Alright, let's play the first turnabout. Well, damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. I I've got to find. I've got to find. S okay. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. For those of you who haven't played this game before, it's what? 2000. When did this game come out? 2002? It was between 2001 and 2003. I can't remember which year, though. One, two, or three. Boy, I am nervous. Boy, am I nervous. Right! What? Hi! Oh, hiya, Chief. Phew! Glad I made it on time. Oh, God, my throat. <laughs> well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat, like this. It says a lot about you, and your clients as well. Uh, thanks. That's something in my eye. Ow! I'm tearing up, I'm sorry, I'm just stressed. I'm just kidding. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendants before this case? Yeah! <laughs> Actually, I kind of owe him my current job. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! Oh. Uh, Lord, no! My life! Everything! It's all over! Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death! Despair! Oh! Oh, uh, would you stop? I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Yeah, well, sounds. Uh, yeah. Nick! Hey! Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. And my job is literally to do the opposite of that. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I... I'm finished. Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who... Who took her from me, Nick? Who did this? Ah, oh, Nick! You gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. Person responsible, responsible for your girlfriend's death? Newspapers say it was you. Yeah, well that's the newspapers. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I love that saying. <laughs> In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. 
He has a knack for getting himself into trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone, and he's a good guy at heart. What the hell? That just means that I hear banging. That, and I owe him one. Which is why I took the case. To clear his name. That's just what I'm gonna do. Okay. August 3rd. 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number one. Oh, here we go. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Uh -huh. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. How is this a compliment? Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Hands shaking, eyesight fading. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name the the name of the defendant in this case. Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. That was the test? Oh no, question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Whew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait. Uh oh. PHOENIX! No, no way! I forgot, I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim? Uh, of course, I know the victim's name. That position. That position is not exactly wanted in this... Whatever. I, uh, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming up. That doesn't make sense. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the R button to check it at any time, okay? Cindy. Something. Uh. Well, I can't check the autopsy, so Cindy. We're just gonna go with Cindy. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Oh, for heaven's sake. Mr. Wright? Who is the victim in this case? Cinder block! That is the victim, the cinder block. It's smashed into little itty bitty pieces. Larry did it. Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me, what was the cause of death? That one I know. She died because she was hit with a blunt object. I'm not even gonna look at the case. I didn't actually read that, but I just, I, I'm playing through the rest of this game right now. I'm on the last part of the game, including the extra stuff that was added later on. She was struck once with a blunt object. Correct. Grants, you answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Guess I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then, first, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. 
as Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Could you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it, ex <laughs> accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Right! Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. Yeah, what else is new? That evidence is the only ammunition you have in the court. I know! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. Prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. Uh, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention! You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get the chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. <clears throat> Mr. Barnes. Is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey! Watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, and Mark Anthony! They all died! Are you planning on dying too? Uh... Didn't they all die? I literally just said this. I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls. Or seeing me. Ever. She dumped you, dude. <laughs> What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you described is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before the she died. Okay. Passport added to the court record. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Yeah, that is that is what we said. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Ooh la la. <laughs> daddies? Sugar? Really, dude? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. Okay. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude. Maybe that's a voice I should give butts instead. Like, dude. Totally, man. You can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Yeah. I can picture several things right now. Tell me, Mr. Butts. What do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah. Larry has a way of running his mouth in the wrong direction. Should I... Object? Yeah! Objection! My client has no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Ugh. What are you, about to have a seizure? Dude, Nick! What do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she-dog. I'm gonna die! She's gonna drop dead! Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Larry! Come on. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused's motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy. This is not... This is so not looking good. 
Yeah, I could imagine why. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh. You went. What do I do? I know. I'll send him a signal. Tell the... That is not how I would sign somebody to... If I were signaling someone to tell the truth, I wouldn't go... Bang! 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 That's not how I would... <laughs> okay, from now on, whatever... Whatever I'm gonna try to tell someone to tell the truth, it's gonna be... Duh, duh, eh. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna tell everyone to tell the truth from now on. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, too bad. <laughs> okay, I'm actually gonna be back here a little bit, uh, just so I can act. W when it's these sections, that I'm gonna be like back over here, just so I can do this for like the objection part. But yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Ah, order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So I like I didn't see her. Okay, you mean the wrong voice. You liar! The defendant is lying. Ow! <laughs> Ow! Lying? Prosecution would like to call a witness to who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who's your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. Okay. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Uh-oh. Order. Order in the court. Mr. Payne, prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, this is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank saw it. Really? Really? Is that the best you got, Capcom? <laughs> to the stand. Mr. Saw it. You sell newspaper subscriptions, and is this correct? Oh, oh, yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Okay. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. <sighs> you know, just because someone's not moving doesn't mean they're dead. Then again, she's bleeding profusely, so I mean... Normally that's the case. Very rarely, but still, if they've got a pulse, then they're still alive. Of course, no... That's not going to be considered. Anyway. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. Thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. That line is contradictive to what you said two lines ago. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Oh, never mind. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 o'clock p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Okay. Oh, oh, oh boy. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. 
Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. And nobody uses those nowadays! <laughs> the phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor? I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Okay. Blackout record added to the court record. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes. Er, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, Wright. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? <laughs> I'm lost! Help! Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Wow. Client is innocent, right? Then what witness must have what then that witness must have lied in his testimony. In this again in this game you assume everybody's lying. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. I don't sound like a female at all in this voice. I only have limits, okay? The one actual female voice is for a character later on. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. There is, and I already know what it is, I think. If I remember correctly. First, find the contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradiction, contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. <laughs> um, okay. On the court record. I know, I know, I know. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing from an apartment. Ooh, yeah. All right, we already heard this. It's hard for me to keep up with all the voices, so if I change voices, I apologize. I can't voice act every single character and remember every single voice, unfortunately. How would you know that? How would you know her phone's not working? It, well, the blackout, duh. I remember the time exactly, it was 1 o'clock p.m., was it? Four to five p.m., thank you. And, wait. Objection! <laughs> ah, you back up further. Like, yeah, that. There you go. <laughs> Part of the thumbnail right there. You found the body at 1 o'clock p.m. You sure? Yes, it was 1 o'clock p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, or er, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Eh. Uh, oh, that? Oh. Uh. This is trivial! The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Solid, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Oh, for heaven's sake. Would you care to give your testimony again? You see, when I found the body I heard at the time, there was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Alright, we're done. We're done. I'm not even going to read the rest. If you want to read it, go. Okay, fine. Oh, 
but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 o'clock p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Really, dude? You just contradicted another piece of evidence that was said like two minutes ago. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Probably back up a little bit more, just in case. Can I show my whole hand like that? Holy shysta, I have to like be this, I have to be this far back? <laughs> okay, well, allows me to lean back into my chair, I guess. I already know the contradiction. It's not that. It's not that either. It's this one. Objection! Since we're being serious here. <laughs> Hold it right there. Prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Ugh. You couldn't have heard the television or a video. Gah! I, well, ugh. Okay, okay. So many noises. So many noises. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Yes, quite. Ah, wait, I remembered. Oh, for fuck's sake, dude. We're not doing this. Mr. Sawit. The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, Your Honor. It, uh, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. So they used to hit, used it to hit the victim. Okay. That must have been what I saw. Saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Now hold on a second! Gladly. What, do you hate the guy or something? Actually, I didn't hear it at the time I saw it. There's a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Uh... I'm gonna press him on these ones. That strikes me as very suspicious, miss. Very miss. That's. <laughs> that strikes me as a very suspicious mistake. Yes, I can see how you'd be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry. I only just remembered that. A table. I just only just remembered that tablecloth. A tablecloth? It was a tablecloth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A tablecloth? Was there a clock at the scene? This is the first I've heard of it. That wouldn't make sense then. Yeah, the murder weapon. Kill you. Objection! I gotta get my whole image in there for that. So I'm gonna be back here when it comes to like the uh, trials just so I could do that. Cause I don't know, I like doing that. Shush. Um, but when it comes to the investigations for later on, I'll pull myself forward. 
Uh, but for now, yeah, I'll be back here. Wait, just a hot moment! The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Wah! You with your objections! And your evidence! Just who do you think you are? A defense attorney. This is literally my job. <laughs> Just answer the question, Mr. Saw It. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may... Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it, and it says the time out loud. Ah. Uh, then he did hear the time. Payne, you're not helping your guy here. You're not helping the suspect. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yeah! Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. The clock. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You stuck her... You stuck her with the clock, yeah. You struck her with the... You struck her with the clock. And the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court! Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Saw it. The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. J conjecture. Just look at the witness's face. <sighs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that, that day, I, I never, look, I, the clock, I heard no, I mean, I saw. Ew. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. Whoa. It, it was him, I tell you, I saw him. He killed her and he should burn, burn, give him death. That doesn't help your case, Saw It. Or Saw It, or however you want to say that. Order! Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claim. Mr. Wright? Your Honor, you claim the sound that witness... That... <clears throat> the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? All you have to do is tilt the clock, you dork. Whole case is writing on this. I better think it carefully. Your Honor, some of her was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock! It ain't that hard! Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, I may have the... May I have the clock? I know how to read. I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, 
You've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the, the discrepancy between what Mr. Solid heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Solid, try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing. Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. How am I gonna prove that? Damn it! I was so close, Mr. Wright. It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indic indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sol. Come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. Treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are slime! Ugh, I almost had it. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sawat! Yeah, I mean, Chief. Is it up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. That doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right. Right, right? Right. <laughs> Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Ah, tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As well, as we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawat? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? There are gonna be a lot of puns in this game. And we're done here. We're done! Order! Order, I say. Okay. Since I believe we're done, I'm gonna scoop forward. This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He... Eh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone completely complete a defense so quickly. In 
find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Hey! And with that, this court is adjourned. It turns out that Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, Larry went to her apartment. The victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawick grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Yeah, not good. Phew. I can't I still can't believe we won. Great! Good job in there! Congratulations! Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all. Not at all. You fought your own battle in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick! Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no, I mean... Bad, 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 bad! Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But... But my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... <sighs> Never mind. Congratulations, Harry! <laughs> Harry? Yes, you. Harry Butts! That... <laughs> oh, man. Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts is... <laughs> if they make that the headline, I'll be more than satisfied. <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Do you have the money? Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A, a present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made the clock for her. I, I, every time I hear that, I always give that reaction. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You? You made this? Dude, why can't you just make more of them? You'd make a fortune off of that. Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick, and and she was just playing me for a fool. Yeah. Don't that make you want to just cry? <laughs> Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse me? <laughs> well, that's not something I hear very often. I think she thought quite a lot of you, in her own way. Nah. You don't gotta sympathize with me, it's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? I know what you're getting at. I know what you're getting at, Mia. Something that proves how she felt about him? Uh, uh, what? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Dude, 
It's nine hours. Differential here. Don't you think she probably had it with her when she left for Paris? Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about the clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Yeah. Whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that's all it was. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. I'm sure it did. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Innocent butts around the world. <laughs> oh no, not that kind of butts? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry. I'm never gonna get over that name. Harry Butts. Really? Who here has a Harry... Who here knows some Harry Butts? No? No one? Okay. <laughs> you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah. Part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Ooh. And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave me up. Yeah, that's probably the payment, honestly. Because <laughs> he could literally make that clock worth anything since he made it. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another innocent. Okay! Incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Boy. Alright, well. The end. So I'm gonna leave this video here. We'll start the next chapter of Ace Attorney episode two we'll start turn about uh sisters next time i'll save the progress after uh ending this episode yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video if you liked it push that like button in so far you can't see it anymore if you really liked it consider subscribing to the channel if you want to check out any more footage that i've done in the past or i'm currently working on now click the box down over there or if you've missed anything in this if you're wanting to continue this playlist, uh, won't happen yet just because it's just this one video, but one, unless you're watching this in the future, then it's probably happening. Anyway, that playlist will still be just right next, across from my head over here. In the meantime, I'm out and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!